whether worst case scenarios of, of regret outcomes would, would be an important part of the conversation. I, I think there's two important principles here. One I've learned over and over again in doing this work, that doing nothing is not neutral. Doing nothing is um, very, very likely harmful, and can you can dialogue very intelligently about the ongoing harm of doing nothing. You know, even if we don't talk surgically and we think of doing nothing in terms of no support and no dialogue about gender, we all know that that's very, very harmful for people over a long period of time. So, so to get out of the space that doing nothing is a safe retreat to neutral um, is an important part of the dialogue. It's not a safe retreat. And then the other um, thing is uh, following the dysphoria, which is uh, one of the things that Joe had talked about in a therapeutic session, uh, you know, the, when she was talking about talking to a patient about their dysphoria, following the dysphoria um, over and over again is the, is the solution to difficult, difficult components of, of gender care. You know, even patients that I've had, I had, a, I had an adult patient who had had a identified male at birth, had a vaginoplasty, thrilled with the vaginoplasty, was on estrogen, got dysphoric with chest tissue, did a mastectomy, is thrilled with the mastectomy. So this is a very insightful, extremely high emotionally intelligent individual who's thrilled with the vaginoplasty and thrilled with the FTM, you know, sort of um, analog FTM mastectomy. But the answer there is not to make it more complex than it was, but just to follow the dysphoria. Follow the dysphoria, follow the dysphoria, and we successfully have so far gotten this patient to a, a, a position of extreme comfort. So um, the dysphoria is what guides us over and over and over again um, for many of the complex decisions. Yeah. It, and there is actually a really great paper on the side effects of binding that came out a couple years ago, and that might be another great place, and making sure that people aren't gonna use that as a reason to deny binders to their young people, but as a like, okay, you know, oh, and another great thing, if you have parents who have chest tissue themselves, they can wear a binder for a day mm -hmm. and get a lot of opportunity for empathy. Or 10 minutes, you can wear it for 10 minutes. Or Joe, oh. where's the paper? Um, I don't remember okay. where it is, but I'll give you give you my um, email and I'll let you know. Lastly, I think it may be a much bigger question, but I was curious if either of you have uh, anything you do kind of anticipatory or responding to post-operative depression or the things you prepare folks for or how do you respond to it? Yeah, I mean, I, I have not in my practice, I have, 100% of people who've had genital surgery have had post-operative depression. Virus regret, temporarily. I've never had anyone who had chest surgery have that. But it is something that I always talk about and say, look, this is a big surgery. I'm not saying it's the wrong surgery, it's most likely the correct surgery for you. And post-operatively, you have anesthesia in all of your cells, your chest looks like pizza. Um, you, there's a lot of things happening that, that can impact your health and well being and your mental space after surgery. So, <laughs> I always tell people before surgery if that happens, just know that it's really common and you're, you're most likely going to roll out of that. I don't know if you have anything else to add to that, Scott. Um, maybe only just a little bit. It's interesting because I. Number one says and say thank you for talking about um, post-operative depression. It's so important. Nobody talks about this. It was really hard for me. Or occasionally, adult patients tell me that they're really struggling with depression after surgery for a little while. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to happen at all in my adolescent patients. And I'm developing a little bit of a theory that you know, post-operative depression is really just life after surgery is really hard for a short while. And if you don't have a support system, you're going to feel really lonely and really fragile, and that might help you feel depressed. I'm sort of learning that. I think a lot of the adolescents that are making it to surgery have a tremendous support system in place that is doting on them after surgery, yeah. and that's enough to not have any post-operative depression at all. But if you're alone and an adult and struggling to pay the rent and yeah. you're feeling super fragile, you don't know if you're gonna descend towards oblivion. And um, so anyway, that... Uh -oh. Lost you. Um, and now I'm saying that it's probably not. 
Sorry, I must have disappeared. No, you're, yeah, you're cutting in and out, but that may be another thing for having surgery younger, actually, is the support system in place. Okay, announcement. We are done. Thank you all very much.